All right, let's take a moment to talk about what we're gonna need for this class. So you're gonna need some double-sided tape. Um, I use the Souk Wang in Canada here. We call it Be Creative because that's our Canadian supplier. Um, you can get it in sheets. You can also get it by the roll. Sheets are a fantastic way to start out with because it gives you an idea if this is a technique that you might like to try, if it's something that um, is in your wheelhouse, or if it's something that, you know what, is really not your cup of tea, you're not totally committed with sheets. Um, getting it by the roll, it's a lot more expensive initially, but by the square inch, it ends up being a lot cheaper. So you can get it anywhere from, well, this is actually even not even the narrowest. You can get like 16th of an inch all the way up to 12 inches wide. So it does come quite wide. My favorite one is the one that's four and a half inches wide because it's perfect for the front of a card without a whole lot of waste. So if you find that this is your cup of tea, I definitely recommend getting it by the roll. There's 25 meters on the rolls, so they last a long time. And if it's something that you love doing, that's a great way to do it and make it a little bit more cost effective. You're also going to need some dies. So one of them is gonna be for this particular technique. It does not need to be a snowflake shape. It could be whatever shape that you want, but it needs to be a die shape that's kind of standalone and makes its own picture. You wouldn't want to one that, like say a poinsettia die that you need to add holly, you need to add different elements to make its own complete picture. You wanna have a die that as it by itself, it's its own picture. So when you're complete, you can put that on the front of a card. And then for this particular technique, Again, you want to have a die that's its own picture that you can color. This particular one here, I could do it do it where I colored it, but most of the snowflake images I've seen, there's not really a lot of shading with it. So you want to have some sort of an image that um, some shading would look really, really nice on. Another thing that you want is a stamp set. Stamp sets can be whatever you want, just something that you can put on the front of a card. I chose a design that was fairly simple and used, I think it was only four colors, um, so that it wasn't gonna take a lot of time to demonstrate. You can go as elaborate as you want. I have another sample here that I use a whole bunch more colors, but I didn't wanna do this one for the class just because of all the extra colors. It's gonna take a lot more time to demo Whereas with something smaller, you still get the same idea. For the glue for this particular technique, where's my card for this? Oh, here's the snowman card. For this particular technique, I use art glitter glue. It's a glue that's meant to use with glitter and it dries completely clear. For the way we do it, you need something that's gonna dry completely clear or you're not gonna see your design. And then I have an oval that I've cut out of here. So you want an oval die set and some tape to hold your die in place so that you get it perfectly centered on your mat for your card. For this particular one here, I'm using Copics to color my glitter. Um, technically, you can do this technique with die base cards, but because of the texture of glitter, you're likely going to ruin your tips to your pens, as well as the fact that because glitter is non-porous, the ink does never, never dries on it. Whereas the alcohol markers, the ink will dry on non-porous surfaces completely, and you don't have to worry about being able to lift up the color from your cards. I'm also using some foam tape. It doesn't have a lot of dimension to it. You don't need a lot of dimension. I'm using some microfine glitter. This glitter, Gives a really, really nice, fine, glittery texture. You could use something that's thicker than this. It will absolutely work. It's just gonna have a little bit different look than my samples, but it's absolutely, you can do it. I also have a pair of tweezers and you want tweezers that have a really nice sharp point and that you squeeze to close because when we're taking bits of tape off, you wanna be able to hold it with your tweezers to pull it up. And then last but certainly not least, for our stamped image, we're going to use stays on. So we are stamping on to, just grabbing my little 
piece of acetate here. We're stamping onto some acetate. Stays on is perfect for a non-porous surface and it also dries um, perfectly on there and it's permanent. So you want to use an ink that's going to dry on a non-porous surface. You're also going to need some acetate and you want to have some acetate that's got like it can hold itself up. You don't want something that's too thin and flimsy because it's going to need to be able to hold up to the glitter that we're putting on top of it. So that is what we need for this particular class. We're ready to get started. I'll see you in the next video.